After months of tweaking and tuning my pick and place machine and thousands and thousands of boards, I'm finally able to run my pick and place machine at 100% speed. So that's getting anywhere between 1800 and 2200 components per hour. It can go faster if I wasn't using the vision system because obviously it has to travel to the camera and then to the board for each component. But in my particular case, the vision system is imperative. Otherwise I get misplaced and misaligned components. So 100% speed is a massive win for me. It means that I can now build the smalls of a panel in just under 11 minutes and the bigs in about one and a half minutes. So an all round trip is less than 15 minutes, including the nozzle changes on the head. Here you can see the pick and place machine running at real time 100% speed. I've zoomed in on the screen of the PC so you can actually see the up vision camera and what it sees as it's picking and placing. On the first board of every run that I do, the board has a lot of mispicks on all of the 0402 components because the feeder actually gets moved once for every two parts and the pick and place head will always try the initial position for the part. If it can't find it, it'll go back to the second position. So as I reset the pick and place file and put a new board down, it's leaving the component positions in odd places for the 0402 parts and so sometimes it takes a second pick, but just on the first board of the panel. And then from there, everything's back aligned again because it does a count to understand, is it on part one or part two of the pull? Now, all of the components that I'm now placing on my Tiny Pico are all using the machine vision, except for one part, the LDO. It turns out that the contrast on the LDO between the package and the feet is too close. There's not enough contrast difference between them and the vision system can't actually pick up the component. So it ends up placing it really badly as opposed to not having the vision system and hoping that it can pick it up in the center and place it in the center. Here it is running at four times speed. As you can see, the wobble on the actual machine and bench is pretty much all gone. Nothing new I've done here. It's just running at optimal speed and efficiency and the lowest amount of wobble that I've seen so far. Now, the only thing that really trips me up from here is feeding issues, not placement issues. Quite often I will get tape that doesn't get pulled back correctly so I can't pick the part up or sometimes the pull pin that it uses to pull the tape along rips through the plastic of the tape especially on some of the larger components that are quite thick and so they're really hard to move through the feeder. I also get situations where the needle will sometimes get stuck inside the hole for whatever reason and get jammed and I have to go and wiggle it back out again and continue. Now the good thing about the machine and the software is that if it fails for any of those reasons, it'll try three times and then an alarm will come up and you fix the problem, you clear the alarm and then you can continue on from where you were you don't lose the, the job or anything you're up to. And on the odd occasion where it doesn't place a part properly or it doesn't pick up a part and place it at all, which is very rare, maybe once I'll see it out of every 10 or 15 panels, I can just hand place that part back on at the end of the panel assembly. Here you can see the large components being placed in real time. The majority of the feeding problems I actually get are with the large components, just because of the widths of the tape and the thickness of some of the parts, the generalized one system fits all type feeding system on this charm high doesn't do a very good job of handling wide and narrow, thick and thin. So I'll often get this part of the process stalling maybe once or twice per panel Sometimes I'll have a good run and I'll get two panels in a row without any problems. And then sometimes I'll have you know, one particular component like the CP2904 will fail to feed six times out of the 15 ports on the panel. It's kind of frustrating. For those that aren't aware why I'm doing smalls and then bigs, the range of components I need to place on the board require four different nozzle sizes. And the machine itself has two heads so it can fit two different nozzles at the same time. 
So I've split the job up into two halves. Well, it's not really halves because the majority of the components are done on the smalls. And then I check all the smalls positions and then I swap the heads and do the large, or the bigs as I call them, which is a fairly quick part of the board. So you didn't see me pull the panel off in between the smalls and the bigs in this case, but I do take the panel off, I put it under the microscope. I fix any of the small components first before I run the bigs, mainly because I need to check the matching network components that sit underneath the antenna. The last thing I want to do is not check those and then place the antenna over the top realize that there was a placement problem and then have to rework the board afterwards and pull the antenna off to fix those components and then put the antenna back on again. So for the sake of five minutes, I pull the board off, I check every single component under the microscope and then I'll put the board back on to do the bigs. I'm currently always running at least two panels at a time. So that means I will paste up two panels, I will do smalls on both those panels, check them both and then do bigs on both those panels and then put them in the reflow oven and repeat that cycle again. But sometimes, if I'm feeling really motivated, I'll actually do four at a time. So I'll run four sets of smalls and then four sets of bigs, where the first two bigs will then go into the reflow oven while I run the second two bigs. So it's working out pretty well, and I'm churning through the boards. Still have a few to go though. Thank you for watching. Thanks to all my patrons, you're amazing. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye.